Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words of the developer. Design warships the way you want them. Command fleets. Win the naval arms race with your nation. Not many words there. Hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll add some of my own. Design warships the way you want them to beat the Hun. Blast the f***ers out the water with your huge f***ing guns. Or, better still, make a custom battle against the French. Give them two ships and you ten and blow the f***ers to Kingdom Come! Yes, guys, this is Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. I like the Ultimate Admiral games. Um, I, spe I, I really like Gettysburg. Wasn't as good as Sid Meier's mind. Wasn't as good as Sid Meier's Gettysburg because you couldn't oblique. You couldn't oblique, guys. You know the line, you know, oblique, oblique at the end, you know, just to turn the line at the end so that you can't get flat. Mackie. You couldn't, though. You couldn't. You could have your line of troops, you know, you, you, but you couldn't oblique the end line to stop yourself getting flanked. You just. This is Ultimate Admiral, guys. It's not Gettysburg. Uh, made by the same people who did all of them other ones. They did the, the sailing one that, that, that I reviewed. That was another good one. Pretty good developers, these, aren't they? Anyway, they've made another good one. This is Dreadnoughts. Uh, this takes place back when um, Britain ruled the world. You know, rule Britain. Oh, you can't sing that now, Mac. You'll get, you'll get cancelled. That's banned. Yeah, so this is back in 18... 90 something or other when you know when steam steam we had steamships going around the world we would steal your country murder you and just exploit you forever uh, that's that was the the, the the way of the english back then um i'm not a bit proud oh we had the biggest fucking empire ever um the sun never sets Mac, shut up and this goes all the way up to world war two uh so I started playing the campaign. The campaign's just come into this. You're playing against the sausage, the, the Germans. And it's pretty decent, actually, because you've got all the big major ports of the day around the UK. You've got um, Glasgow. Is it Rosyth? That's Glasgow. You've got Sunderland, which was a huge port back in the day. Hull. Uh, Great Yarmouth was, an, was another good one. Bag End by the Sea. Mac, that was, you just made that up. Some decent ports. Um, you've got Liverpool. And when the ships pulled in there, all the chaffs stole all the rudders. And then you've got the German ports, which is over where the Germans live. And basically what you do is you can either design your own ships or let the computer do it. And it's one of the best parts of the game, just designing your ships. You've got a tonnage limit. You've got your basic guns that you've, you have you kind of get at the beginning. And you, you can just lay out your ship the way you want it. There's uh, a few different classes. You've got your battleships, you've got your cruisers, you've got your light cruisers and your torpedo boats. Uh, but there's quite a decent research area where you can research over... Sorry about that, guys. If I was professional, I would redo the whole thing, but I'm Mac. So, yeah, as I was saying about research, um, you, you research things, you can specialise in certain bits to get them done a little bit faster, but generally speaking, everything researches over time. Uh, bigger hulls, uh, better guns, better ways of detecting the enemy, better ways of aiming at the enemy, better ways of just keeping your ship afloat, uh, different armour, penetration submarines, torpedo, it, shit tons, guys, absolutely tons of stuff. And you research it over months. So every turn, it's like a turn-based game uh, it, with all the logistics side of things. If outside of the battle, you've got your, your, your world map. You can see uh, how many fleets you've got, how many fleets the Germans got, how many victory points they've got, how many victory points you've got, how long the battle's going to take, etc., etc. And then you just click next month, and that'll advance a month, and everything that you've chose to do strategically will be done at the end of that month, such as research and things. But there's also finances. You've got to kind of balance the books a little bit. You've got to see how much money you've got available for the Admiralty. And then you've got to decide where you're going to put that. Are you going to put a, a lot into crew? Are you going to keep the transporters going? You've got to keep your transporters going because the Germans, the Germans, the nasty fucking Germans. Are you going to have a third go? Are you? If I'd one go, lost. I have another go, lost. Are you going to try it? Stop. Uh, the Germans, um, <clears throat> they're trying to sink them. Bastards. And so you've got to keep your transports out there. You've got to keep the transports going as well. And training your crew is essential to get your, your crew going, get some decent levels of uh, training going on your crew. But also technology. The more money you put into technology, the quicker things will research. So that's kind of the way it goes. And as you unlock new technology, you might want to go back and rebuild better ships. I mean, 
the, the base ships that you get at the beginning, uh, you, after an hour or so, you kind of have better shit available to make better versions of them. So you can scrap ships, uh, you can bring out the new prototypes of them and set them out to sea. It's all good up till now, but then it gets a bit. You kind of uh, make all your ships, you, you assign the ports of where you're going to build your ships, and then you just kind of ending turn, ending turn, and until shit happens. And then you'll get a little notification on the map that a convoy's under attack. And you'll mouse over and you'll see how many ships they've got, how many ships you've got, and decide if you want to take control of that battle or let it just auto kind of resolve. Now, I made like a ton of battleships and it was a good hour and a half before I even had a battle with a battleship in it. A lot of them were cruisers, light cruisers, torpedo boats, and it got a little bit boring at doing these battles. It was there, there were nothing really big. They were just like, oh well, there's two of yours v two of theirs. Okay, one of yours v two of theirs, three of theirs v three of yours, one of yours v one of theirs, and I was like, what the hell? Come on. Get the big battles going. Where's four battleships, three night cruisers, and a few f***ing others under theirs? There was none of that. It never really happened for me um, in the nine and a half hours that I played it, except for really deep into the camp. Well, not deep, about after about a year or so into the campaign, um, I got a huge battle between the Germans and the British. We had pretty much every ship we had out there, and it was a huge big battle, and that was great, great stuff. But there wasn't enough of that for me. And also, while we're starting on the downer side of things, the AI, although it is pretty decent at the firing and at the knowing when to retreat sometimes, they can't f***ing stay it to save their lives, guys. The, the amount of crap... Tell you what, if you were having a big battle and you have, say, three convoys, because you can assign ships to uh, you can have like a flagship with a few other ships underneath them, and when you steer the flagship, the others just follow, which is really nice, really well done. But if you have like um, three, say three different flagships with two or three ships w within each little group and you assign the AI, which you kind of just the, the stroke of a mouse to control, say, two of them groups and you want to just concentrate on the best group, you know, the battleships, um, expect crashes because I don't mean computer crashes. I mean, ship to ship crashes because the AI just seems to be mental at actually turning and knowing where there's another ship in the way. It's just, what the hell? But once they're spread out and away from ramming each other, the AI is pretty decent at knowing when to run, when to turn, give it a full-on broadside and stuff like that. And ammo usage as well, because it is quite technical, this game. You can't have it all on auto if you don't know what you're doing. Mac, that's what you did. Prick. Or if you really do have a girlfriend with blue hair, you can just choose to do all of the stuff yourself. Penetration. So I don't mean penetrate your blue hair. I'm on about penetration of the enemy ships because there's plunging damage. That means if you fire at a big high arc and the, the, the shells come dropping down above the ship and they pierce straight through the deck. But you've got to look at how much armor's on the deck and all that. Me, I can't be arsed with that. It's just f***ing fuego the bastards. Auto kill. That's it. Now, here's the, the best thing. I've played this with one arm and it's been my left arm as well, which I can't really use yet. Although I can wipe my ass with it now, so I'm getting better. Um, and I didn't really have much of a problem. Uh, there was a, a couple of times getting the camera angle right was a bit of a faff. But if I can do it with one arm and my bad arm, then it's very, very... Hats off to the developers. Really easy controls. It's pretty easy to play. Uh, the way you control the ships, like I mentioned earlier, is you just alter the course of the flagship and the other ships will form on, on the back of that or they'll form abreast of it, depending on how you've got the formations. You can put up smoke screens to um, kind of make the enemy uh, miss you a lot until the smoke screen wears off. You've got torpedoes as well, and you can assign whether to have them fire uh, aggressively or just normal. So you do have a lot of control over stuff. You can just select the shells that you want to fire, and there's a lot of research to do to make your ships bigger and better. It's very early doors, this. It's just released with a very, very basic campaign. I've read the roadmap. It sounds very exciting. So this is definitely a decent game to buy. It, it's even, I mean, it's 27 bills, which is a lot for an early access game. But guys, I've got to say, it's... There's not many games like this where you're controlling uh, battleships and that. So 
I think it's definitely worth a buy. I'm having a blast in this. It's a great game. It's got a great future. So, yeah. Exciting times, guys, if you like this kind of shit. It's not shit. It's good shit. It's not bad shit. It's good shit, guys. Good shit.